Hey guys, um, don't mind me. I'm laughing and smiling because I've been telling myself my own jokes. And <laughs> I crack myself up. I'm a funny guy. Quiet! Okay, Rise of the Oath Breakers parts one and two real quick. And this is a special message for the FBI because I know you're listening. After part one came out, I go, okay, a few people are buying the book. That's great. That's who I wrote it for. I hope they learn, you know, and I started the YouTube channel and I thought there's got to be another way to utilize the information in the book. I decided I was going to start mailing copies of part one because that's the only one that was out. It wasn't a part one at that time, but I started mailing it to some of these bad cops and these rotten agencies. And I can tell you that, yeah, it's out of my own pocket and I have sent at least... 80, by, it's probably more, but at least 80 copies of part one, Rise of the Oathbreakers, to these officers. And I'm very serious about it. Um, I just order it right off Amazon. You know, I have the name and address of the officer and where he works, the police station address, and then I just ship it, you know, with Enjoy Your Gift from D.B. McRae. Well, we've got part two. It doesn't mean I can't keep doing it for part one, but... It does get pretty expensive on top of the expense and the time and everything that went into to actually bring the book to you guys to get it out there for sale. Well, I got to thinking, there's a particular cop out of Dothan, Alabama, who's just... Mm. Canine officer Kay Fisher, remember he arrested some um, citizen journalist? Uh, you are... Too close to my traffic stop. You ever seen how flamboyant he is? He does this. He's, you will stand over there. I am telling you that you must stand over there. If you don't stand over where I tell you to stand, I'm going to arrest you for interfering. He just It's the same way he was when he uh, put the screws to Jeff Gray. When Jeff was just trying to, you know, film a COVID site. Then you had site security who, oh, we, we got to call the cops. And who shows up at Fisher? He's the one who jumped out. He came up real aggressive and jumped out. And I know you're just a frauditor. And then he just demanded ID. He went the ID route. There were more officers there. And Jeff he ended up having to ID because otherwise, you know, Thanksgiving was coming up and he didn't want to spend three days in jail waiting to bond out. That's what happens. You'll sit. So I've always had a special place for K-9 officer Kay Fisher from Dothan, Alabama. Mr. Flamboyant. So I included him in Rise of the Oathbreakers Part 2. Yeah, FBI, I weaponized that to who? The FBI. Boy, do I go after them in Part 2. <laughs> See, I'm funny. <laughs> well, I included K-9 Officer K. Fisher, Dothan, Alabama Police Department. In part two. In fact, I think it's five or six or seven pages just to him. And it's in a section about, say, Avita saying to the Fourth Amendment, the cops who show up, give me ID, freeze an ID, get it, put your hands by me, and off you go. When there's no reasonable suspicion or probable cause, they just go after ID. Kay Fisher's in that section. I'm a funny guy. <laughs> I crack myself up. Shut up! See ya in a little bit, FBI. <laughs> funny guy. <laughs> Myself up. <laughs> okay, here we have proof of delivery, July 27, 2023. And I've got a copy of the note there that went with it, page 192. Enjoy your gift from D.B. McRae. So he opens up to page 192, and this is what he's going to see. But what's going to catch his eye is this the picture with the caption and the thin blue line flag. Now, look at the caption Hairplug Fisher. A real American hero. Hairplug Fisher. A real American hero. He's going to read that to himself time after time after time. Thin blue line flag, but look at his hairline. And here's how it starts in page 192. We turn our attention now to the story of incompetent police officer K. Hairplug Fisher. The epitome of a piece of trash police officer. The quintessential example of a tyrant who could not care less about either the Constitution or his ridiculous G.I. Joe haircut. Fire your hairdresser, soldier boy. Just saying. 
So thank you, Mr. Bravo Mike Unchained and Mr. Jeff Gray. It was a pleasure doing business with you gentlemen and helping hold Hairplug Fisher <laughs> accountable. And he'll be thinking about that book and the picture and everything else for the rest of his days. <laughs> I'm a funny guy. <laughs> I cracked myself up. <laughs>